Westbrook's numbers last night mean absolutely nothing to me because even though that's great numbers, that's what Westbrook can do. We all know this. He's a former league MVP. He's the most athletic point guard we have ever seen in NBA history. Bradley Beal and you are in the backcourt together, and y'all are 17 and 28 in the Eastern Conference. I mean, damn. You've played with some great, great players over the years, some talent. And not a single title to show for it. If I'm going to look at everybody else, whether it's LeBron and Kyrie and Steph and everybody else, I got to look at that too. I'm, the numbers are the numbers. That's Russell Westbrook. He can do that to anybody. But I'm at a point in time in, in, in his career where it's like it ain't about that no more. It's about whether or not you can get to another level to win the chip. Swim at. All right, let's do that. So uh, this was Stephen A. yesterday, and that was after Westbrook's historic night in Washington. Westbrook wasn't happy with the remarks, made the following comments in his postgame presser yesterday. A championship don't change my life. I'm happy I was a champion once I made it to the NBA. I grew up in the streets. I'm a champion. My legacy is not based on what I do on this court. It's about how many people I'm able to impact. It's very important that you don't let negativity seep in. It's been like that my whole career. No other player takes the heat that I take constantly. And finally, we have my guy, the Hall of Famer and NBA TV analyst, Isaiah Thomas, joining us on the phone. Isaiah, you got us? I got you. I am here. Perfect. Great to, great to have you with us. I can't wait to get your take on all these juicy topics. But, Stephen A., what is your response to what Westbrook just said about you? Well, as I said at the top of the show, I respectfully disagree in his, 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 his comments from his wonderful wife, Nina, were far more incendiary towards me. Uh, and I just want to say that I applaud her for coming to the defense of her man. I think that any man that has a, a, a wonderful woman in his life, uh, those are the kind of qualities that uh, are some of the qualities that make them so wonderful in our eyes. The fact that she would come to his defense the way that she did. Uh, plus, she has credibility. Uh, she's his wife. She's a former basketball player at UCLA, if I remember correctly. She's a, she's a, a legal therapist. Uh, as well. She's a businesswoman. Uh, she's a sensational woman. And, and obviously, if she wants to support him, I totally get where she's coming from. And I meant no disrespect uh, whatsoever. And I'm sorry that she took it that way. But I, do, I did not stutter with what I said. And I don't take back a single solitary word that I uttered out of my mouth. I made it a point yesterday, as I have done continuously, to rave about the greatness of Russell Westbrook. I didn't say he was a scrub. I didn't say he can't play. I said he's great. I said he's destined for the Hall of Fame. His talents just demand that, along with his numbers. What I said was, is because he's been so great, those numbers are ordinary. I am not going to salivate over you having a triple-double in the midst of a season that has you 13 games under 500 outside of the playoff picture in the Eastern Conference with Bradley Beal at your backcourt mate, even though Bradley Beal isn't in the lineup at this particular moment in time due to the injury. The fact of the matter is that when you look at Russell Westbrook, he's been going home in the first round the first three years after uh, Kevin Durant left. Uh, James Harden sent him home. Donovan Mitchell sent him home. Uh, 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 Damian Lillard sent them home. He had numbers. Didn't have the support from Paul George one year that he needed, and we get all of that, but the results were the results. You go to Houston last year, you bow out uh, to the Los Angeles Lakers. No shame in all of that, but now you're in Washington. So Russell Westbrook has played with Kevin Durant, James Harden, Serge Ibaka, Reggie Jackson, Paul George, Victor Oladipo, James Harden again, okay, and now Bradley Beal, and he doesn't have a ring to show for it. That's not entirely his fault. Hell, I'd mentioned Sam Presti. You're the man running basketball operations for OKC. And you know what? There's no championship to show for it. So Russell Westbrook is not alone. But what I did point out, Isaiah, was that Russell Westbrook, if he improved his perimeter shot, particularly playing all of those years in the same conference as Steph Curry and Damian Lillard, perhaps he may have found better results. That's what I said. I stand by that. I certainly said nothing about his character. I love the brother. He's as real and authentic as it gets. He's charitable. Uh, he's philanthropic. Uh, he's a soldier, a warrior, a, a leader. I got mad love and respect for Russell Westbrook. I just wish that he had worked on his perimeter shot better. I don't see anything wrong with saying that, and I don't think it warranted his response about generational wealth and all of that stuff, and certainly didn't warrant his wife's response, although I certainly respect her coming to the defense of her man.
That's what I said, Isaiah. Floor is yours. I, I'm going to speak in, in, and I think there's a, a lot here to unpack because, um, uh, and, and Molly, I'll include you in this also because all of us as classified mm -hmm. uh, minorities in, in this space, in this system, when we talk about, you know, being champions off the court, uh, Stephen A., your journey as a, you know, a four-year scholarship player at Winston-Salem playing for, you know, one of the, the greatest coaches ever and, you know, big house games, uh, you know, you, you are a champion off the court also. Um, you know, in your industry, you've become a champion. Molly, your path to getting to where you got to, you know, as, as a minority, as a female in this space, has made you a champion off the floor. Now, inside your arena, you become a champion inside the arena. And where Westbrook is at is he's been an undoubtedly a champion off the floor, uh, classified, uh, you know, black, colored, Negro in this country. The pathway that he's had to take, all of us have come through extreme poverty. Yes, he is a champion off the floor in terms of making it to the NBA where there's only, you know, 400, 4, 450 uh, that, that really gets to, to play and compete in the NBA. So you are champion there. Now when you get inside the arena, you know, when we want to use the word champion, and there are different levels to this. When, when, when Russell Westbrook, MVP of the league, matching numbers of Oscar Robertson and Magic Johnson doing things that those two have done, when the champions walk into the room, Okay, there are different levels to all championships and who gets respected for their championship journey. Okay, now, Russell Westbrook, we all want to see him in that championship room. So the numbers that we see him putting up every night, while they are impressive, they are historical, we ask, okay, can you get to the next level in terms of being a champion in this arena? And a lot of superstars don't make it to that next level of being champions in this arena. It is a very difficult path. Now, what some superstars have done is they've demanded more from their coaches, from their general managers, from their teams to make sure that they have the right support system. If Russell Westbrook is guilty of anything, it's not being demanding of his coaching staff, of the organization that he's playing for, to say, hey, I want more. As an MVP caliber talent player, you should be demanding MVP talented coaching. You look at the best players who have ever played in our league, most of them have experienced and had great Hall of Fame coaches. So, Stephen A., you can't throw this all on Westbrook. You have to move over to that bench and look at who he's been playing for for the last eight, nine years mm -hmm. also. Well, Isaiah Thomas, uh, I, I, respect, I, I respect where you're coming from. Um, I don't disagree with your overall synopsis. What I would challenge you on is the relevancy that has to do with what I said yesterday based on Russell Westbrook's performance the night before. My comments would never, I don't care about Russell Westbrook's numbers and accomplishments, period. I said, at this point, I don't care about it. In other words, we've seen what you've done. We know what you can do. We know how great you are. So numbers that you might have produced in the middle 40 plus games into a regular season in the year 2021 doesn't mean anything to me coming from Westbrook at this point because he's made it so ordinary. He averaged a triple-double when he won the MVP, had 42 triple-doubles that season. He's averaging a triple-double right now. The guy's phenomenal. What's the one thing missing? And I said, look, as a, if you watch and look at his game, here's why I think a re the reason might be in terms of his struggles from the perimeter, specifically from three-point range, while you got marksmen that he's going up against, particularly in the postseason. So if I make that argument, I don't think that warrants, um, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a champion in life. 
I've seen plenty of champions that are unhappier than me. Um, I don't care whether I win a championship or not. That's not going to define me. Things like that. You can say that when it's over, but while you're playing now and you're getting paid and the patrons are out there clamoring for championships, winning records and things of that nature, that comes along with it because you're competing. Then he also said, hey, I see broadcasters on television messing up people's careers. I'm paraphrasing, messing up people's career in college, you know, denying them the opportunity to get ahead because of the critique that you provided. Well, actually, that's not true. It's them watching their game, looking at what they're doing on the court against their contemporaries and judging who's better and who's worse.